Welcome back to another video with me, Miss Martins. This video is mainly for grade 10 physical sciences learners who are just learning about electric circuits or electricity, but grade 8 and grade 9 natural sciences learners, you guys can use it as well. It's for you. The basics of electricity will be discussed in this video. And grade 11 and grade 12 physical sciences learners, you can use this little series that I'm doing now as a recap. So we'll be looking at these things over here. This is an overview of the lesson today and the lessons to come. Today, I'm going to talk about what an electric circuit is, how the energy changes in a circuit work. We're also going to be looking at the variables and the units, the physical quantities associated with circuits, as well as a brief overview of your formulas. I'm going to show you circuit components and how to draw a circuit and then in future videos we're going to go deeper into these topics and we're also going to expand and understand things like what is potential difference what is current what is resistance how to calculate all these variables with our formulae and i'm going to also make sure you understand the difference between a series circuit and a parallel circuit the first thing that you need to understand is that the movement of charge the movement of electrons creates electricity and that's why we say that electricity is basically the flow of charge the flow of electrons now where do the electrons come from they come from our conducting material that we use materials with high electron mobility which means the electrons are free to move around something like copper which is a good conductor of electricity okay and the conducting wires also form the pathway okay for the current to flow then how do they get energy they don't just move a battery or another source of electrical energy that is connected to our conducting wires that battery provides the charges with the energy that they need to flow throughout the circuit remember we need a closed circuit with a conducting material like copper and a energy source in order for the circuit to function correctly the energy changes that take place within an electric circuit is very very important for you to understand so i've drawn a flow diagram for you let's start at the top we've got the chemical potential energy in the battery so over here i put a battery for you yes that's what a battery looks like in grade 12 we'll be doing galvanic cells we'll be also looking at electrolytic cells but when we do the galvanic cell you'll understand how a battery works it's pretty cool but basically the battery as you can see over here has chemicals inside of it it has chemical potential energy when we connect that into a circuit with our conducting wires that chemical energy chemical potential energy is converted into is transformed into electrical energy and the electrical energy gives the electrons the charges the energy to move around the circuit energy is measured in joules okay charges the charges the unit for a charge is coulomb so the battery says here we go here's some joules here's some energy for every coulomb and that is how the little charges get energy to move around the circuit when they arrive back at the battery they get more energy okay very very important then the reason why we need this electrical energy is because those little charges then move around the circuit to the components in the circuit like the light bulb like you can see up here or maybe an appliance or maybe a resistor or something like that and that electrical energy is converted into heat energy or light energy or energy needed to power the appliances remember energy cannot be created or destroyed it can only be transformed from one form to another so that's why we transform the energy from the battery to electrical energy and then to heat or light energy now above me you can see some physical quantities some variables that are associated with electric circuits and electricity so you can see potential difference or voltage current resistance charge power energy or work each of these quantities have a letter in a bracket that is the symbol that represents that quantity so for example a shorthand instead of saying resistance i can say r so if i want to say the resistance of a light bulb is 10 ohms instead of writing resistance 
equals 10 ohms. You can say R equals 10 ohms. With that being said, above me over here, let me just get myself over here, above me over here are my units. So units, remember, that is what something is measured in. So if I want to say, hmm, I'm going to, I'm going to bake a cake and I need however many grams or I, I need however many milliliters those are units if someone asks you for your height you say I'm um, 152 centimeters something like that that's a unit so these are the units for the physical quantities listed alongside them you need to know these you need to study these it's the saddest thing ever when in a test someone writes the unit for current as coulomb or volts or something like that as you should know in physical sciences, it's also very important to always put your units in your answers. Now these over here, these are my formulae or some of my formulae. We're not going to get into these into a lot of detail this video, but I just want you to keep in mind that this, this section you need to conceptualize, you need to understand the concepts, what is the difference between a series circuit and a parallel circuit, how does it look, and then you need to be able to apply these formulae in the correct way for different parts of the circuit to work out things like current, potential difference, resistance, and we will get there. But for now, just be aware of them. So this is just a reminder that for electric current to flow it needs a complete circuit, a pathway, we use conducting wires, generally copper, can be other things. It also needs the electrons, the current, the charges, they need a push, they need to flow and that comes from the battery. What I've done here just to, you know, drive my point home, just so you know what I'm talking about. These are the quantities, the symbols, the units, and an example of how you would say it in a question, how they would say it in a sentence. So if we look at potential difference over here, potential difference, the symbol is V, but the unit is also V. So if we say the voltage, the voltage V across a resistor is 3 volts, 3 V. Let's look at current. Current, the symbol is I. So you can say I, the total current I, is equal to 3 amperes. Then we got resistance, charge, work energy, and power. We will get to this. If you would like to see videos of me going over these, going over calculations for these, please let me know in the comments below. Whether or not I carry on with a series right away depends on how many people give me the feedback. Like, yes, we're doing this in class. I need this now. The last thing I wanted to go into in this video, and then in the next video, we'll draw some circuits is the components that make up the circuit. So if they ask you to draw a series circuit, draw a parallel circuit, or draw a circuit with the following components, you need to know the symbols. So a cell looks like this over here. We've got the long terminal, which is the positive terminal, and the short terminal, which is the negative terminal. That pairing, that long line and then the short line, that generally makes up one cell. If they say a battery with three cells, we just draw three of them next to each other. Just remember, long terminal positive, short terminal negative. Little things, like we want to eliminate the negatives, they're little. Big things, positive, positive. Keep the big things, positive, positive, big things, okay? <laughs> then switch, open, and closed, okay? Open and closed. Draw the little dots to indicate that that is the switch. A light bulb is generally drawn as a circle with a cross through it. Resistors are generally drawn as this little squiggly line, or you'll see in a lot of tests and exams, and this is how I do it with my students, we do a little box. And look at the variable resistor, a rheostat. A rheostat is something where we can change its resistance, we can make its resistance vary. It is a box with an arrow through it. Now, an ammeter down here versus a voltmeter. Ammeter, you can see a circle with the A in the middle, it's ammeter. Ammeters measure current, ammeter, ampere. Voltmeters measure potential difference or voltage, V. And I wrote here, if you can see, I wrote series and I wrote parallel for, the, for each of them. Ammeters measure the current and they are connected in series. The reason why is because they have a low resistance, they do not obstruct the flow of the current. Voltmeters, however, have a very high resistance. Therefore, they must be connected in parallel. 
so that they do not obstruct the flow of the current. The current's not going to want to go through them, so they're connected in parallel. Let me show you. So here's some information about batteries which we have discussed. There's a symbol for a cell and then for two cells, for example, which can make up a battery. Then we've got our conducting wire, we've got switches. Open switches obviously breaks the circuit, it prevents the flow of charge. If we want an electric circuit to function, we need to close the switch to complete the circuit. This is what a light bulb looks like when it's in a circuit, as you can see over here, the little circle with the, the line, the cross through it. And over here, we have a resistor. And resistors are basically used to control the strength of the current. As I mentioned, rheostats are resistors that we can vary the resistance. It's a variable resistor. We can increase the resistance or decrease it. This is what an ammeter looks like in real life, one example of an ammeter in real life. And over here, we can see how I've connected the ammeter in series. Now, I'm going to go over what series versus parallel is in my next video. But just for now, you can see that an ammeter is connected in series because it has a very low resistance. Voltmeters, however, you can see I have a little arrow pointing to the voltmeter. Voltmeters measure potential difference. They have a very high resistance. So they're connected in parallel like this. You can see over there, I've drawn a little red dot that kind of illustrates the break in the main circuit line, illustrating that the voltmeter is connected in parallel. And that's because the current won't flow down that branch, which means that the higher resistance of the voltmeter will not affect the flow of the current. In the next video, we're going to go over circuit diagrams. We'll also be looking at how to connect resistors in parallel versus in series. If you'd like to see more of these electricity videos, please let me know in the comments below. Comment down below what part of electric circuits you want to see. Please give this video a thumbs up. Share with your friends. Help them out. And don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to be doing a lot more videos from now on.